Uh, I finally got my head bolts in with uh, the bushing. Uh, most aftermarket heads have a half inch hole, but uh, it takes a 7 16 stud, so this just fills it up, and that way when the bolt's in there, there's no free play in there, and it helps keep it from moving around. I doubt it moves when it's clamped, but that's just where they are. So I took this head all apart, um, cleaned out the inside, did a little deburring, um, any sharp edges. Uh, when I get to do the other one, I'll show you what I did. So here's how I check the piston to valve clearance. I have it set about, uh, it's about 15 degrees after top dead center for the intake. You can see the uh, intake lifter started to come up. Here's the exhaust, the exhaust is all the way down. So that's when the valve is gonna be closest. I did it at 10, 5, 10, 15. But here you can see how much space I have. So I have a lot of room before it hits the valve. So that's a lot. And I'm playing room. Uh, I originally ordered ARP bolts with the with the bushing from ARP in a set that all comes together and uh, they were back ordered and they said they were supposed to ship and they never came and I just couldn't wait so I ended up buying the bolt separate and then buying the bushings I bought them from Procomp because these are about a third of the price of the uh, ARP bushings. When you buy these bushings separate, they cost more than the bolts. It's kind of stupid. But anyway, I noticed um, when I took, I put these, put the heads on just to mock up my rocker arms, and I just snugged down the bolts just so the head wouldn't move. But when I took them off, you can see, look at there around the bushing. So, if I hold it this way, Let's see if I can get, uh, there we go. See, there's a little space in between the bushing and the head. That bushing won't come off. It's stuck on there. It's, it's not moving. So the bushing has a sharp shoulder on it. And there is a very big wall. I guess that's enough to just catch at the top of the bolt because it flares out just a little bit. It's not. Uh, not the same diameter. So I'm going to have to end up using the regular washers and probably in the kit, if it'll all come together, you probably have to use the washer anyway. But you can see the washer has a taper on there. Let's see. So that keeps it from binding up. But hopefully I can get these things off. And but what it was doing, it was just turning the bushing against the aluminum head, kind of defeating the whole purpose of having the washer. So, just another problem. Alright, I've got the first head all installed. Uh, I'm working on the second head. And like I said before, uh, the first thing I wanted to do is take these apart and then deburr them. You can see, get a little closer. You can see when you just rub a paper towel across it, it's got a very sharp edge here, like a burr. It's, it's kind of like when you sharpen a knife on one side only, then, it, then the edge folds over, you need to take that off. So it's a, it's a very sharp little edge here. I'm pretty sure if I run my finger down here with enough pressure, it would slice me right open. So I'm gonna get rid of that. And it goes almost all the way around and also around the spark plug hole. There's some little sharp little, sharp little uh, pieces left over from the, from the machining. They did chamfer the, the bolt holes, but they didn't chamfer anything else. So uh, I did this, did this first cylinder here, and you can see it leaves a nice little, nice little line along there where, it's, where it takes that burr off, and now it's nice and smooth. You run your finger on there. I'm just using a little tool like this. Let's see, it's a little tool. Uh, the end rotates around. These are like I don't know, ten bucks or something ridiculous. So basically, you just put it up on here like this and just just drag it along the edge. I don't know if you can see that little... See, it just cuts off that little burr. So 
that's all you do. It's very, very easy to do. And it leaves a nice little edge on there. It's not sharp. Um, sharp edges create hot spots and those little pieces of metal might eventually flake off. So that's what I'm doing next.